Electricity. It's powerful stuff. Not something that you would want to just rip out of the ground or anything like that. Today, we're going over one of the locating methods to locate electrical cables and wires. When it comes to electromagnetic locating methods, there are four locating methods. Just quickly, these are direct connect, induction ring clamp, induction sweep or transmitter drop, and passive sweeps, also known as power and radio sweeps. Today, we're gonna to be talking about passive scans and in particular, the power scans to find underground electrical cables. It's important to note that there is a correct way and a systematic process to complete these locating methods. So make sure you're utilizing the correct steps at the right time during the locating process. How does passive scan work? Our cable locator, technically called a receiver, when set to power, radio or passive mode, can detect traceable passive signals from buried utilities and objects that are emitting electromagnetic frequencies in some form along the radio spectrum. For power mode, the receiver is looking for 50 Hz electromagnetic signal frequency typically found in electricity and power as it transmits through the cable. The receiver is set to 50 Hz as it's the same 50 Hz frequency by the oscillations of the alternating current in the transmission of electricity. As the electricity's alternating current completes 50 cycles in one second, the frequency is set to be 50 Hertz. Now that we know this, we can better understand how to deploy this method of locating out in the field. Now, passive won't typically be the first step you take out on site, but on odd occasions, it may be used to quickly identify what might be around so you can carry on with the active locating methods which can provide better confidence in the trace signal. In fact, the first thing you should do is do a before you dig request to get back the main asset owner's utility drawings, including the electricity plans. Because we are looking at locating electricity cables and how passive scanning works, let's have a quick look at this Endeavour Energy Electricity substation here in southwestern Sydney. As you can see on the plan, there are some high voltage conduits running through the road and bending into this substation. These are the cables I'm going to sweep over using the power mode on this radio detection receiver. I know that there are cables coming in roughly to the western side of this substation. I know this from the available electricity drawings. But there are some other signs of electricity cables in the area that we first need to establish by doing a thorough site walkthrough. As you walk up and down the road, there's pits, there's valves, there's hydrants. You need to be aware of what's underground, as some of these utilities can affect the way passive scanning and power and radio modes can have on accurately locating underground services. As we do our walkthrough, we're noticing signage, plaques on the curb, scarring in the road, warning posts, signs of trenching, services going from overhead to underground, and even down to the different patches of grass. Being visually aware of what's around you is going to set you up and make your job a whole lot easier when completing your active and passive scanning. Now it's time to start scanning. It's always a good idea to have some sort of an idea where you think underground utilities are running so you can complete your power mode or locating sweeps in a strategic fashion to set you up for success. As I said earlier, we are fairly certain that there are some high voltage cables running along this area I'm planning to check. We know this because we've checked the dial before you dig plans, also known as before you dig Australia plans. We've done our site walkthrough and identified some of the warning signs and also the trenching which matches the electricity drawing. Now it's time to begin our sweeps. As I'm planning to sweep, I walk with the face of the receiver at 90 degrees to my target line I'm trying to locate. As I approach the high voltage cables, my receiver is starting to notify me that I'm getting close to the utility line that's emitting 50 Hertz frequency. The gain will start to rise, and as it rises, I'm waiting for the signal to drop off. Once it drops off, we can walk back towards where our highest reading was earlier and pinpoint this peak signal. When we are tracing high voltage electricity, the signal is very strong, and depending on the voltage, like in transmission cables, it can be very tricky to pinpoint on power mode. As the gain bar rises, you're going to need to drop your signal strength to be able to fit the gain response 
within the receiver's gain display. Once you've pinpointed this signal, place a dot where you think the pinpoint is and carry on moving on tracing out this peak signal on the electrical line. Now this all sounds easy, doesn't it? Every location we go to requires a strategic process to complete the job efficiently. Some jobs are easier than others and you never quite know what you're going to get until you get your equipment out of the vehicle and start scanning. Just because we've located this cable with the power mode, using a passive locating method doesn't mean we've accurately located the cable. There's a few things we need to know and keep in mind when using passive locating methods. When it comes to the Australian standard AS5488, passive locating or power scanning methods are not classified as a quality level B or QLB locating method, as we have not used active locating methods to trace these cables out. Just because you can use passive scanning and power locating modes in certain situation, you should always use the most accurate locating methods possible to give you the greatest confidence level, not only for the Australian standards, but to look after the safety of the guys working around these underground cables. Now that we've identified that there are some peak signals being detected approximately where the electricity plant shows they are located, there are some advanced locating methods we would roll out after this point. As I mentioned before, passive locating is a valuable tool to use during the locating process. Although generally it's something that we finish a job on rather than start with. As you've seen as we walk through the job, there were utility features visually identified through the walkthrough. I would start with actively locating these underground cables first and then look to do a passive locating more as a double checking measure to make sure we've picked up all the traceable services possible. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Actually, there's many wrong ways to do it. Although following a structured process from start to finish is going to get you great results at locating all traceable underground services in a given work area. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Have you seen guys using the power locating methods in a strange order? Are they only using passive or power scanning modes? I'm certain some of you have because too many of you guys expecting jobs to take 30 minutes when realistically they take more than a couple of hours. I hope you enjoyed this video on locating underground cables using the power mode locating method. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with our weekly videos. I'll see you same time next week. Stay safe.